Hi, this is Sunil Bharti and we are here at KubeCon in Cloud Native Con in Barcelona, Spain. And today we have with us Torin Sandel. You are a co-creator of Open Policy Agent or OPA or OPA. OPA as we like to say. Yeah. So first of all, tell us what is this project all about? So OPA or Open Policy Agent is a domain agnostic uh, general purpose policy engine. And uh, what that means or what it gives you is the ability to um, decouple and offload policy decision making from policy enforcement. So, you know, suppose you were building, you know, microservices in your organization. Um, you might have to make, um, you know, decisions when that microservice receives API requests. And those decisions are policy decisions, like whether or not to allow the request is based on all kinds of rules from within your organization. And so what OPA gives you is the ability to offload that decision-making process to a dedicated engine so that your administrators and your, your ops teams and, and yourself have more control over the service at runtime. So the goal of OPA is basically to help um, unify policy enforcement across a wide range of technology. Um, you know, and that's, that's why we call it general purpose, why we call it domain agnostic, is because you can use it basically in any service at any, any layer of the stack. Why did you create OPA? When, when the company started and when we started the project, um, we'd been talking to a lot of large organizations, you know, financials and so on. And what we were hearing was that, you know, they have all these systems and all of these systems have their own policy modules or their, their own authorization systems built into them. Um, and, and, and they might be good point solutions, but the whole, the overall ecosystem was very fragmented. And so what that means is that if you want to have control and visibility over who can do what across the stack, you were just kind of out of luck. And so what we wanted to do was basically try to provide technology that would help unify policy enforcement across a wide range of um, you know, software um, and, and basically policy enable or empower administrators with more control over, over their systems. How does OPA work? Can we just deep dive into a bit? OPA itself is very, um, it's very generic in a sense. It's, very, it's kind of like a low level tool that, provide, that provides a building block. Um, and so what that means is that you basically integrate it um, into your service as, uh, as a library, or you can run it next to your service as a daemon. And what, the way it works is that whenever your service receives some event or receives an, a request and it needs to make a policy decision, it executes a query against OPA. So it, it might ask, should this request be allowed? Or you know, in, in the case of uh, you know, the Kubernetes API server and admission control, it might ask, you know, should this request be mutated or modified in any way? right? And so when that query is executed by the service to OPA, it provides a bunch of attributes. And you can actually provide arbitrary JSON attributes to OPA. Um, and then OPA will basically take those attributes and it'll evaluate them against the policies and the data that OPA has access to, to produce a decision like allow or deny in simple cases, which gets sent back to the service to be enforced. Right? And so in doing this, you've basically decoupled policy decision making from policy enforcement, which means that you don't have you know, these, these rules, these, these, these constraints, these guardrails that are very important for the functioning of the system, right? That safeguard the system, they safeguard data, they safeguard, you know, the integrity of the platform and so on, right? You don't have all those rules hard coded inside of, inside of applications and inside of like platforms, right? The, the problem is that like in the past, a lot of policy enforcement was just done, is just done, and still today, true today, is, is done very manually, right? Um, you know, policies are literally written down on wikis or in spreadsheets, right? Or, or they're just tribal knowledge, right? And then it's like swap, no, okay, like, you know, how, how do I configure this system, right? And then you would tell me, and then I would go, like, manually do it, right? The, the problem with that is that it doesn't work in these sort of modern, um, modern environments, right? Where everything is very dynamic and ephemeral, where the technology stack is very heterogeneous, right? You know, there's like, Every, every development team could use a different language, right? There's all these different protocols. There's, there's all these different execution environments, right? How do, you, how do you, like, gain control over that manually? You just can't. You need to automate it. And so we, we, the philosophy behind OPA is around sort of policy and security as code. And that's what, that's what we're doing. OPA is also in the incubation stage mm -hmm. at CNCF. First of all, why did you contribute the project to CNCF? We started the project, like, over three and a half years ago now. And... The, 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 the kind of the idea from the beginning was to create this technology that would help policy enable other services. And so for the first um, you know, year and a half or so, as we were you know, building out the core technology and then talking to people that were, that were experimenting with it, um, they, they, they asked like, would you donate this to a, to, a, to a foundation or something like that? And we didn't really have a reason not to do that per se. Um, and so when we started looking at different foundations, we, we, we looked at CNCF and we, thought, we saw that it was gaining traction and we saw that it could provide 
like a, a vendor neutral home for the project, right? And so we, we felt like that was a really good match because, you know, the whole, well, like the idea behind OPA is that it, it helps unify policy across a number of different systems, right? And it helps kind of enable portability, right? You can have the same policies enforced on premise as you can in Kubernetes, you know, or rather on bare metal as you can on Kubernetes, as you can if you're in the cloud and so on, right? And so we think that CNCF provides a great home for the project because it is pretty vendor neutral. When a project is in incubation stage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for the project mm -hmm. and for the community? So we joined CNCF last year, um, last, last April, last April. And at the time we joined as a, as a sandbox tier project. So CNCF has different tiers. There's sandbox, incubating, and graduated. And uh, so we joined at the sandbox tier. And that was sort of a reflection of where the project was at the time. We had you know, a, a handful of production users. Um, but the contrib contributor base was relatively small and, and not, as, not as many people had, had heard about it. Um, over the last year, we've seen quite a bit of uptake in terms of like the end user community, the number of people that are running uh, OPA in, in production. Um, today, there was a keynote from ABV uh, AMRO, which is a you know, financial institution in the, in the Netherlands, and they were talking about how they're using OPA to enforce uh, guardrails over their, over their platform. Um, and so this is, a, this is a pattern that we've seen, um, you know, play out over the last year is just a lot of uptake, largely around um, use cases like Kubernetes admission control and uh, API authorization. So the move to incubation has mostly been driven, I think it's a reflection of like the progress we've made over the last year. Um, it has, I, I will say that like the move up to incubation, um, we have heard from some users and some customers that um, that, that's, that it's, it's useful for them in terms of communicating the project internally um, because it's a, it's a higher status, it's a higher tier within CNCF. So from incubation mm -hmm. to graduation, mm -hmm. what is the process and how long it typically takes? I don't think there's any hard like deadline on, on when the project has to graduate. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, the CNCF does like a yearly review of, of projects and so we'll look at it you know, in a year and make a decision then. Some of the criteria is around uh, the, the diversity of the contributor base, like how many different companies are actually contributing to the, to the, to the project. Um, and I think that the trends there are good. Uh, if you looked at like the 2017 to 2018 um, timeframe, it was like 95% Styra, the company that created it. Uh, if you look at the last year, it's about 75% Styra. So we're starting to see contributions from other, other uh, corporations and, and organizations. And so we think that that's going to continue over the next year and, and in the future. So as the contributor base grows and becomes more diverse, then I think that the, the promotion to graduation would make sense. What are the upcoming plans for the project? Today, like I mentioned a minute ago, OPA is used for kind of two main use cases today. So there's like the Kubernetes admission control and general like platform policy use case where you just want to say, you know, don't allow users to run containers from untrusted registries or, you know, don't allow developers to expose applications on the internet unless they've gone through some approval process, right? So that's sort of one category of use cases around admission control and platform policies. We have another category of use cases that are quite popular as well um, around API authorization, particularly for like uh, internal uh, microservices and, you know, microservice environments. And so, for example, that's what uh, Netflix uses OPA for. And we've, we've talked at KubeCon in the past about that. Um, so those are our two main use cases right now, and we're going to continue to support those and, and optimize for those. Um, but we're also starting to look more into more application level kind of use cases of how do you enable um, or how do you how do you provide a building block that that offloads like application policy decisions to a dedicated engine, right? So if you imagine um, you know enterprise software companies building products. Every time they ship a product to the enterprise or they expose it as a SaaS, it has to have some kind of authorization capability in it, right? And so today, um, there are uh, several companies doing this already um, with OPA. But what we want to do is look at some of the areas where we think we could take what they've done and kind of generalize it a little bit and make it more reusable. Um, so we have a bunch of work that we're doing around uh, data filtering, um, data fetching. Uh, as well as taking the OPA policies and compiling them down into WebAssembly so they can be executed in new kinds of environments. What kind of community are you building around OPA? So we have, um, we have a bunch of different kind of channels through which people can kind of engage with the project, right? So it's been open source since day one. So it's on GitHub, you know, you can interact with it there. You can submit patches. We love patches. We love people filing issues and all that kind of stuff. We also have uh, like a Slack organization. And so there are about 800 or there's 850 or so people on that right now, right? So there's people on there talking about their use cases, talking about their, you know, how they're using OPA and talking about policy in general. 
Um, we've also started, um, recently we started a sub-project uh, as part of the Open Policy Agent called OPA Gatekeeper. And that is a, um, a project that provides sort of first-class integration of OPA and Kubernetes for the admission control use case. And so that's being, uh, we've got participation from Google and Microsoft and other organizations um, there. So we're starting to see a lot of companies kind of get involved and start contributing to the, to the project. Perfect. So hopefully, maybe maybe next year we'll have like an Opa Con or something like that, you know, a little event or something. At Kubecon. <laughs> so uh, Torin, thanks for talking to me today, and I look forward to the graduation of Opa. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time.